Hey there guys, what's going on today? Another review video from PMKF30 today. And today I'm going to be talking about and reviewing really quick. Uh, this will be, I don't want to drag this out for like 10 minutes or something. But um, I'll spend a couple of minutes talking about it. I may or may not uh, talk about spoilers, so I'll make sure to put spoilers in the the title, okay? So, if you don't want spoilers, don't watch this video. <laughs> anyway, first I just want to go over, uh, my comic shop was nice enough to hold a variant of Mortal Kombat X. They brought the comics back, and unlike previous comics, with the exception of the tie-in video game ones, which was the Mortal Kombat 1 comic, the Mortal Kombat 2 comic, and the Mortal Kombat 4 comic, and the Mortal Kombat Deception comic, and the Mortal Kombat uh, vs. DC comic, although that's not canon, that's more of a what-if scenario, as crossovers are never canon. But, um... <clears throat> Unless it's, of course, within the same universe, then. Different story. But, uh, you know, moving on from that. Uh, these, the Malibu comics, you know, they were just, like, based off the MK mythos. They weren't canon. They made up characters, other realms and stuff. And same thing with the outside media. You know, Conquest, Mortal Kombat Conquest, Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm, the Mortal Kombat movies, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, the first Mortal Kombat movie, of course. And then Mortal Kombat Annihilation, uh, you know, so on and so forth, Mortal Kombat Legacy. Those are all fan-made and Mortal Kombat Rebirth, you know, based off of the MK mythos that we all love. They're not canon, though. So, recently, Sean Kittleson, who's a big MK fan, he's actually the same age as me, you know, he's uh, in his 30s and he grew up, you know, knowing his MK stuff, so he the lucky guy who got the job for DC Comics, and he writes them. So you got Kittleson here, and then you got Soy, who is uh, Dexter Soy, and then Gandini. I believe her first name is Veronica, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, she's the colorer. Soy is the artist, and Kittleson is the writer. So yeah, rated M for Mature. So unfortunately, I found out you can't download Mature rated comics from the DC app. I don't know why. Apparently it's stupid, because Watchmen is on there, and Watchmen is... Well, most people thought it was considered rated M, but it's actually rated T, which I find kind of funny, because that comic is as dark as you can get. I mean, maybe not MK dark in terms of violence, but it's got sex and violence in it, so I don't know what's up with that. And we all know the movie was rated R, so who knows. So you can't get this on DC's digital app. You can get it on Comixology and Google. However, if you do not want to go to the store and buy them physical, physically, your physical copy, like here, I'm buying them for collector's reasons. So I got them bags and boards. Uh, this is the first variant, actually, the probably the rarest. I believe they said the percentage was uh, every comic book store gets for, for every one of these which are the regular standard covers, variant, the Sub-Zero Scorpion, uh, merging covers, they get one of these. Now, I don't know how true that is, that's just something I read. So, I actually just ordered this from eBay, too, because my comic shop told me the other day, well, you know, we'll see if we can, we'll hold it, or if not, we'll put you in a $25 raffle, uh, you know, for it, which they do for variants they put people you know they put your name in a random raffle and if you get picked you get it if not you don't so i said screw that i want it anyway so of course i, I buy it from ebay for like ten dollars and then you know they hold it for me this time so you know i'm happy with that so i'll have two copies of this rare and valuable variant so this is the cover of that variant you see the new mortal kombat dragon here that's the new updated logo you see mortal kombat x this is pretty much a prequel to the game. What happens is, if for those of you who have been following the MK Mythos, Mortal Kombat 9, it follows from Mortal Kombat 9. What happened, I believe, five years after uh, Kittleson said on his Twitter, anywhere from five years after to the beginning of MKX. You know, that's what the timeline's going to cover. So it's a prequel to MKX, just like Injustice, you know, but a little different. So this is covered for that. I'll show you the back. I don't think the back is anything. Yeah, the back is just uh, uh, an ad, unfortunately, for Justice League, Throne of Atlantis. So yeah, you know, it's pretty cool. 
I'll open it up for you, see if there's anything, you know, uh, front cover, nothing really, you know, back cover, you know, again, nothing really new. So, uh, they do show you a preview, though, of the, uh, of the, of the next issue. You know, if, uh, a little bit, so I don't want to, you know, like I said, I, pretty much what happens is, uh, <laughs> what it is is, hold on, so, First, I just want to say I give this a 10 out of 10. It's a great comic. Whether you're a newer reader or if you're like me, you're just a hardcore Die Art MK fan from the beginning of time and until eternity, you'll also love the series. It's got the violence. It's got the maturity. It's got the darkness. It's got your favorite characters. And it's uh, it explains a lot, you know. And it I could tell, you know, th this series is going to be a great medium for developing the characters further, you know. Uh, Scorpion especially, he's pretty much, he's, it turns out at some point Kenji helped him, you know, a while during the Netherrealm War, which is pretty much the war that was to come, teased at the end of Mortal Kombat 9, uh, aka Mortal Kombat 4 timeline, more or less, and, you know, pretty much Kenji at some point, he helped free him from his rage from Scorpion, because he was prior to that known as Hanzo Hasashi, so, uh, yeah, there's Scorpion, and there's the Sub-Zero. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... So, he helped them free him from Scorpion taking over him completely. So, Hanzo is currently controlling... You know, he's got control. But it seems, if you want, read the first arc, uh, the first issue, rather, um, he kills Suhao by punching a hole through his head, literally. Really badass style, too. You know, I gotta say. And with that, I would say that he is, um, he, he could summon the power of Scorpion at least, or he just lets Scorpion take him over whenever he, he wishes. And it, clearly he's got the knowledge of the past, because in the next issue, issue two, Raiden pays Scorpion a visit, and he refers to something to him as, oh, you know, there's a demon hunting down Earth's warriors from another realm, blah, blah, blah. And Scorpion, and, you know, and Raiden's like, well, you know, Earth Warriors are, you know, more or less a dime a dozen these days. And Scorpion says, well, whose fault is that? You know, <laughs> for those of you who follow MK9, you know, Raiden pretty much changed the timeline to prevent a disastrous future of Armageddon, everybody dying, Shao Kahn ruling everybody and whatnot, merging every realm and so on. So he changed that. And in the process, a lot of heroes died. Although, that doesn't really seem to mean much in MK, as today they just revealed the trailer, which is badass, by the way. The new trailer showing Katana and Kung Lao and Goro at the end. And apparently, Katana and Kung Lao died, and yet they're both back somehow. So, you know, MK is... Some people are like, oh, it's MK, you know, it's a cop-out. They always bring back dead people. It's silly, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? What series that's popular doesn't do that? I mean, DC and Marvel have been doing it for years. So, come on. You know, if you got a popular character, they're probably going to come back in one, in some shape or form. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, Scorpion gets, you know, so, uh, you know, he helps Kenshi's son out. He raises him and such. And then at the end of the first issue, also, you know, you see Sub-Zero uh, seeking the dagger, apparently, and, uh, which is guarded by Scorpion that Raiden gave to him. It's a little confusing. I said, you guys got to read it, but it's an awesome story, you know. And it ends with Kano slicing a scar, Sub-Zero's famous scar. So some people speculate that that Sub-Zero might be Kwai Liang. Who knows? Possibly by him, but I doubt that. Um, yeah. So, and then issue two, you know, Fox gets possessed by the demon, slaughters Shirayu clan, and, uh, you know, pretty much is... It's up to Takeda to fight him. And, uh, yeah, it's just like, well, hell breaks loose, you know. So, you know, Scorpion loses it. He starts getting memories of what happened to him. So, yeah, I mean, it's a great series, though. And these are the two variant covers. So let me show you real quick before I end this video. That's the exclusive hard-to-get variant. And then you got the interlockable covers. Get over here. Yeah. And Sub-Zero charging an ice ball. So there you go. So, blood ties. 
One thing I noticed is his blood ties on the Sub-Zero cover and not the Scorpion cover, which I found interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, uh, that's it. I rec highly recommend this comic for mature readers, people, Mortal Kombat fans, gamers. Read this comic. It's awesome. Alright. Comment, rate, subscribe.